Welcome to Tackle Fanatics TV. Well, I only just got back from uh, South Africa filming season two of Monster Carp. Fair to say it's very different to where I am today. This is Bush Farm in Essex. Um, it's a new syndicate lake. The interesting thing about here is it's a very peculiar shaped lake, um, almost like a snake. This is, that, believe it or not, the wide bit. I was involved with the stocking of it as well. I put, helped put the fish in when they went in. Uh, VS Fisheries, uh, Simon Scott and Viv Shears is a lovely stock of fish that they've bred over many years. Um, there's Sutton, Harrow Crosses, um, and then there's one jewel in the crown here, a real big one, um, a big common. So it's fair to say I'm here for that. Um, if it comes along, lovely, but there's so many other beautiful fish in here. Scaly ones, short, fat ones, a little bit like I used to be. And I like these types of lakes. They're intimate and very different, you know. Do monster carp, you're on somewhere that's like 50,000 acres, and then you come here, you know, a few acres. Just gonna dot a few spots in there. This rod's got a zig out there, just a little mini one, which is one of my favorite late winter spring tactics, especially when the water's sort of nine to 12 foot deep or more. Because when the, when the fish wake up, they definitely tend to start having a look around for natural food that um, hasn't been there for a number of months. So they're waking up, they're searching. You don't need a lot of bait this time of year. You just need the frequency of it. Imagine fish are gonna start roaming around and um, you're just trying to catch their attention and nick bites on their patrol routes, really. That's the, that's the key to this time of year. So, the spot, so that spom's not clipped up, it's just literally three or four spoms, mini spoms, well the midi one, the medium size one of um, this new prototype bait by Mainline, um, a prototype ground bait, a little bit of pellet and all I've done is just add some hot water to it and that just tends to wake the bait up if you like, just give it a little bit of life um, on an otherwise cold and rainy day. I've not put any goo into that mix for the minute because I've got it on my hook bait, but because I'm using the buttercorn goo, which is actually quite a soft, sweet one, um, I'm not then going to lace my loose feed with it because that's going to make everything attractive where I try to keep my hook bait the most attractive thing out there. And then the loose feed is the next stage down, but there's more of it, if that makes sense. So if they're greedy, they'll come into the noise and the spread, but then the hook bait in amongst it like this little mini zig or the, the two wafters on the other two rods will hopefully do the job. So that's the last one. That's it, just a few dotted around them. And because I've got all sorts of particles there, I'm chopping the boilies up into the spawn, just crumbing them in my hand. You've got some boily crumb, a little bit of pellet, some of this sort of flake ground bait, and it's just sort of going to be wafting about. You know, it's got there's 12 foot there. It's going to take quite a while to get down. So there's going to be loads of stuff going on. So if any fish move through at different layers, then I'll be able to see. Um, so I'm going to give it a little while. What I'll do is if it, if it stays quiet and uh, I don't get any activity, then I'll get that uh, deeper fish finder out and feature finder because um, I might just not be on them. They could be checking out the shallows, which are over to my left or, you know, under a bush over there roaming around. So great little bit of kit to have on you on a day session that is just to just to sort it out because it's only the second time I've been here and that was brilliant the first time I had three fish on a really cold day and um, you know when nothing was getting caught anywhere um, and that was all down to that they were literally out here no man's land you'd have thought they'd be under the trees or right on that you know in the back of that bay no they were just there like there so um, yeah a little sprinkle I've got I've got like 10 millers few chops, a couple of those bigger baits just catapulted out and what I'll do is every sort of 45 minutes I'll just go and put a pouch load out over the bait, over the rods. Um, just one pouch load, a little bit of noise and I've seen it, underwater film when we've done it at St John's. They sort of don't clear the bait out, they, they disappear, they go for a little look, they get bored and they'll go somewhere else, go and check someone else's spot out. There's no one else here so there's no one else's spot to check out but they might just go somewhere else, eat a snail or something. So <laughs> put a little bit more bait in and they'll come for another look-see. That's the plan, isn't it? You know, girls get bored, don't they, at the bar? So, you know, slam another bottle on the table. All right, ladies, coming for a drink? 
I say it all the time actually, whether it's lure fishing, you're fishing in the sea, going to the Florida Keys fishing for sharks or tarpon, whatever it is, hook bait is the holy grail. Let's say you're on fish, you've got a great rig on, you've got a sharp hook on, the absolute number one thing you need on is the right hook bait. Once you nail it, you're on. You're on like Donkey Kong. That's a bite. Well, there we go. <laughs> Banoffee wafter, butter corn goo, and uh, the little and often baiting. Actually, what I did on this rod, um, I put a couple of spoms of the, the mix out into one area over a zig and I'd noticed that um, there seemed to be a half decent reaction to that. I'd seen more bubbling on the, the rod with the, the spod mix on than the ones just with the 10 millers and some boilies over. So I actually put three little mini spods in that area of just, I was crushing that prototype mainline bait down. And um, again, with that sort of corny ground bait and a little bit of pellet, and I put it over the two bottom bait rods as well because obviously I was getting more activity over the little one and a half foot zig than I was <laughs> the bottom bait rod. So um, I did that about 45 minutes ago. Um, but at the same time, a little bit of sun was peering through and we said to, said to the boys in the crew that I think the action was going to start around 12 o'clock. Cold water fishing, whether it's early spring, late winter, whatever you want to call it, they, they are so nomadic and it's just that tiny climbing temperature of the water that just sparks them into a little bit more life. You might be getting a little bit of activity out there when, it's, when the water's cooler, but when you start getting competition, that's always when that water climbs up a bit. If one spot's not working, if you've got a nice little light lead on, don't be afraid to sort of plop it around in different areas because then fish will be exploring you know, little pockets of natural food. And those fish are on the lookout. They're not really on the lookout, I don't think, for our baits. They're on the lookout for natural food, which they haven't had for the previous few months. Um, and suddenly it's coming up, you know, it's like you've not had your favorite meal for two weeks, in my case, probably a pizza. And then suddenly there it is, you know, you want it. Battling hard, I tell you. Right, we're getting to uh, judgment time. Look at the little red kicker. It looks like it's hooked in the top lip, that one. I'm not sure, no, no, it's in the bottom is in the net. We'll take that, won't we, eh? When, you're, when you've got the rods out, don't then go, right, that's it, I'm done, get the kettle on, go on the phone, chat to the missus, whatever it is you're gonna do, yeah? Get some bait in there, you know? I'm not talking about a lot, it could be a couple of little spoms, you know, peppered about. It could be a pouch load of little 10 millers, it could be a couple of chops, just the flavour the air. Get some atmosphere going in your area. Wow, what a lovely little bar of gold. This is like sovereign scales, um, 17 and a half pound. And I'm guessing this went in at about 10 odd pounds. So wonderful weight gain in um, just over a year. And uh, what a cracking start to a cold water session in the early spring, late winter, that's about right. And the buttercorn goo doing the business as it has done from the very beginning of field testing. Awesome stuff. I'll take that. Well, the boys at Kiana have uh, surpassed themselves once again. I think it's fair to say by now, everyone knows just how good the goo is. It isn't a fad, it isn't some gimmick. They are without a doubt the single best attractor I've ever used for carp. And I think there's quite a few other anglers that say the same. There's three new great ones about to be released imminently. The first one that I want to talk to you about is the buttercorn. A lot of anglers that like using washed out baits will be pleased to know that it's in the white colour. It's actually very difficult to get a white dip that doesn't separate in the bottle. And these guys have done a brilliant job with it. What can I tell you about the buttercorn? Well, firstly, you only have to taste it to realise just how magnificent this is.
<laughs> it's probably one of the most complex and beautifully made goos to date. They are all different and that's what you've got to remember. There's numerous flavours out there now, but every single bottle, every single flavour is unique in its composition. Now the buttercorn is slightly thicker than a normal Supreme, so it won't cut right through to the core of a bait. What it will do is probably scar the bait by two or three mil. I'll keep drizzling it in over time. Ever so slightly, it'll cut more and more into the bait and that's enough, that'll be enough to get in there and give you that scent. In testing, it has been magnificent. Um, it's caught a number of big pressured carp from around the country, um, and on our monster carp travels as well, it's been absolutely brilliant. Moving on to a flavor that I don't think needs any introduction, Scopex. Probably one of the most legendary carp catching flavors in history, and Kiana carp have now managed to not only source a wonderful, wonderful version of it, but a really unique one. In fact, when you smell it, you'll get a little scent of maple as well. Um, this is the supreme one, and this is the smoke. Okay, the smoke is thicker. You can apply it onto hook baits before you cast out. But what I like to do is not only do that when casting out, but I like to add the supreme into a tub, and this one is more watery if you like, even though it's not like made of water. <laughs> you can put this onto the, uh, into a tub of bait, allow it to suck in over a period of time. Maybe I like to do them over a couple of weeks, you know, and just keep adding it on and it will suck into the center of the bait. And then once you've done that on two or three cures, then you apply the smoke. Probably one of the negatives I hear is the price point of the goo. Um, people always moan, 11.99, they think they're throwing these out as loose feed, you're not. One bottle is going to go a long way. You might use that much on a tub of bait, and then if you apply it to PVA bags, you put it into solid bags, you put a little squeeze on a spawn, that's going to last you multiple, multiple sessions. So then you're talking £2 a session. Who can't afford that? Even me, in my paper round days, I would have gone that far if, it, if I knew something was as good as this. A little bit goes a long way. So don't think you're going to spend 12 quid in it's each session or even 36 quid in free bottles. They're not. They're going to last you a long time. More importantly, catch you a lot and lots of carp. That's the important thing to remember. So there you go. Three new compositions of goo. Different colours, different viscosity, different attractiveness. More importantly, awesome carp catchers. Get them on all three rods all two rods, whatever you're using, get them out there and I guarantee you, use them hard over a year and you will increase your catch rate without a doubt. When we filmed the underwater film at St John's and what was happening, because of the fish's speed, the way they're moving, they're sort of coming through and that's sitting there and they were instantly hitting that first because it had taste. When Dan fished the same scenario afterwards and he was just using his sort of squid wafters, um, they didn't have goo, that hook bait was getting nowhere near the same attention. They were coming in, they'd pick four, five, six, seven, fifty baits up around and sometimes just not even show any interest in his hook bait unless it was right in the line of fire. Where with that goo, they were coming in and they were hitting it straight away. You know, it was like the food was the attraction, almost like your feature, and the, the hook bait was just the thing they wanted and that was clinically down to the goo, without a doubt. I learned so much doing that underwater film, you know, seeing the reactions and, and the little tweaks to the hook bait, getting that in front of the fish. Once you find the hook bait for that venue, and away you go. Mix it up with the flavors. You've been tuned in to TFTV. Tackle Fanatic stock an extensive range of tackle and bait from all the leading manufacturers. To check it out, go to www.tacklefanatic.co.uk. Member Tackle Fanatic's also of finance to make your tackle purchase more affordable. Tight lines and wet nets from everybody at TFTV.